And greetings, folks, and welcome to another drawing video. But I'm also going to be blathering about today about art and why we like it, what we can do to improve, and also for those who want to know how to get into the you know, a career in art of different forms of art. I'll go through it all. Um, yeah, the first picture you saw was a drawing that I did in the last video that I haven't put up. It was of Lily Cade, and then you saw was my really bad drawings that of um, of Finn, aka Rose. Um, yeah, his real name is Jude. But anyways. I didn't like that picture of him. I did a better one, but today that you're going to be watching, if you bother to, I'll be drawing his um, K. Parker. Um, right now, I'm just kind of looking in my phone for the image, you know, trying to set it up. So, yeah, and with this particular drawing, I'm not going to be drawing the standard way, you know, with line work and stuff. But instead, on the edge, and I'm going for the gradients and darkening and just basically going for uh, the shadows and stuff. So it's kind of a different way of drawing. To tell you the truth, there are so many different ways of drawing you don't have to do it like how you're taught or told, oh, do the outlines. Because if you really look at it, there is no outlines in life, you know. You don't see an outline on a person or anything like that. We just kind of put that in our drawings. So, oh, well. Anyways, um... This is more of a shading and smudge technique that I do. It's not how I normally draw, but this is one of the ways that I do to get out of the funk. Uh, if you want to know what I'm actually saying in this video, uh, it's uncut version, not edited like how this one is. Right now, um, I have it up, but it's unlisted. I'll, I'll put the link in. It. So anyways, um, art, why do we do this? Why do we draw or paint or sculpt or any form of art, really? Um, it's usually a passion, what we crave, what we like. Uh, sometimes it's just a way to express the, our emotions, our turmoils that are going on. And you're also probably wondering um, how is it that a lot of the more famous artists, you know, are usually painters of some sort, and um, why they're all messed up, you know, psychologically, mentally, emotionally screwed. Well, if you really think about it, everybody is, but to some degree. Everybody suffered for their art um, or had, you know, traumatic experiences. And a lot of times these kind of passions, including lost loves and stuff that we're able to express in our art. It doesn't have to be painting. It could be sculptures. It could be interpretive dance. It could be plays, opera, sonatas, uh just music in general, even if you're going for some simple pop music of the day. A lot of artists of all sorts have dealt upon the basic uh, feelings of loss, regret, uh, heartache, uh, the emotional turmoils that are going on. Uh, most of it, it has to do with love and desire 
but most of the the more famous pieces is like from the past and stuff there were a lot of that was commission works so it's usually commissioned uh, for religious reasons or for political or you know some rich guy or usually it is for their own personal vanity and glory or whatever there's multiple reasons why somebody would commission some sort of artwork or an art piece or a music piece by somebody. It's just how it is. Um, so, you're wondering, like, Is this cheating, you know? Like, what is cheating in art? It's up to you what you consider cheating is, but typically, no. There's... It's kind of a yes and no thing about does cheating exist in art? You could say no, but that's not absolutely true. And you say there's no rules in art, but that's not true either because every kind of art style that there is there is set standards and rules and but how you go about of creating it it depends on what it is so if you're going into hyper realism yes you have to draw it uh, as realistic as possible. And that includes the shading and stuff. And you can also do fine, you know, work on the face and whatever, you know, going in fine details. So it's super meticulous. Um, it, hyperrealism is not the same as realism or as uh, photorealism. Photorealism is when you're trying to make the picture look like it's a photo. Realism is subjective to each period that you happen to be in. Because um, if you look through a lot of artwork, especially during the early Renaissance works, um, a lot of it doesn't seem very realistic, but you have to understand during their time, that is as realistic as they've seen their works, you know. Same thing with looking at more classical works from the Romans and Greeks, you know, because you get is a hyper-realistic, you know, um, of, um, of statues, you know, from the ancient Greeks and Romans, you know, uh, the high Hellenistic period. That's what we consider that super realistic um, Greek period of their artwork is um, high Hellenistic and low Hellenistic would be when it was very simplistic and kind of primitive looking. Art has always gone in a, a cycle between um, super simplified to extreme realism and everything in between and it always goes from one end to the other and then back towards the other so think of over simplification to hyper realism and then going back to simplification this happens constantly and you've noticed within um since the 1800s to now yeah it's gone back <laughs> towards you know you know going the simple uh, hyper simplification and it's done multiple times with the, even within the 20th century it's you've seen things that are oversimplified to um being kind of illustration to uh hyper realism photo realism uh, to the point where you see artwork where it's 
how the human eye actually sees everything. You know, but then there's others that claim that they did draw, but uh, um, of how the human eye actually sees things, but it's too clear around the edges where it shouldn't be. Uh, yeah. But art is just how it is. It always goes from one spectrum to another. And same thing with music. We go from uh, simplification to the extreme absurdities, you know, to um, very complex musical pieces that is highly enjoyable. That it doesn't even need lyrics, but yeah. There's all different types of ways of expressing. And art has been one of those things that we have been creating before the advent of the wheel. You could say one art of all forms of art. Our way of expressing ourselves in some way is the very first creation that we ever had as a species. Um, you know, what you would probably consider the human species, but, you know, because all of us are homo sapien modern, typically. I've seen some people that I swear that are more um, Cro-Magnum than uh, Homo sapien, and then others look like uh, the Neanderthal, or Neanderthal, to you, um, by their facial and structure, bone structure, just how they hunch over, and these are just living people that look like they're from, you know, the prehistoric period and stuff. You know. Oh. Huh. So, why do I do this? Um, why I draw? And why do I draw it in the manner that you see me in this? Um, I do it because I enjoy it. Simple as that. Why I draw certain kind of faces and stuff like that. Well, when I draw people, it's because of several reasons. One, it's because I find the image or the person themselves to be interesting, look, you know, looking interesting. Uh the shadows and whatnot, or it's the pose that I happen to like, or I find the person to be attractive. You know, most of it, it's on interest to me. Do I want to draw this image, you know, make my own copy of, uh, of a photo or something that I see right there, you know? A lot of times I just draw from real life, you know, quick sketches just um, for the sake of it, the challenge, as it were. And I like to catch people off guard. Even with my photography, when I take pictures of people, I quickly snap pictures of people when they're not posing. They're, they're in a nonchalant, uh, uh, you know nonchalant kind of way, you know, uh, they're, which ends up making the, the picture, not, uh, well, more believable and more interesting than your standard pose, because you've seen these poses before, and it's so artificial, because, yes, it is, because they are poses, people, you know, 
know that they're going to have a photo taken of them or a picture drawn and they want to be in a certain position and they want to look a certain way, you know, the standing point and all that. But a lot of times, you don't want that. It just looks so boring. Because you've seen it millions and millions of times. So when I'm at a convention, I see characters, you know, people dressed up as characters I happen to like or, or whatever. They have, like, really cool cosplays. Um, usually when they're off guard, they're not posing or whatever. They're, you know, not paying attention. You know, if it just looks really interesting, you know, uh, so I just quickly take a picture of them <laughs> usually without their consent because usually if you do they just kind of like want to be in a certain position like let me get ready but it's like no that's the whole point i just want to catch people off guard uh not to harass people or anything it's just i find it you know Interesting. There's like some people that noticed I did and they wanted to see what I took. And I said, yeah, here. And I explained to them that when I saw you standing like this or whatever, it looked more interesting than your poses. Or at least to me. And they thought, you know, so I'm going to use that as reference models for drawing style too. And some of these photos, I've done that. Others, I've lost. You know, things get lost over time. And you can see in this picture that, yeah, I'm drawing uh, um, Kay Parker. And uh, there's my phone with um, the photo reference of her. But, it's, yeah, this is just uh, shading, you know, just going for the shadows and stuff. I suggest that you try all different ways of drawing. You know, you don't have to do just the outlines. Go for, like, shading of the lights and darks and the shadows and stuff. Different values to block it out. Well, you know, get the correct shapes before you do the your fine lines and detailing. It might actually help you. Yeah. To get your images more uh, realistic, I happen to like uh, smudging with my fingers and hands and thumbs and all that. I even do that with my paints, and it just, uh, to me, it's the only way for me to get the correct values to look and feel the way I want it to look and feel, you know. Um, so how are you going to get about into the art field? Is it right for you? Um, how to get about, um, do you need education on this? Um, I'll go through a lot of that right now. Um, and also, I'll also go on to the whole thing of, the feeling that you're not where you feel that you should be. It's like, do you have these plans of what you want to do and accomplish? A, you uh, Like within your art, you want to be at this level, this you know, you know, greatness, whatever. You want to be famous or something, or uh, you want to be um, successful, you know? And why haven't you hit what your um, idea of success is. Everybody has their own pace and their own timing and their own capabilities of this. Um, I'll go through the whole thing about uh, talent versus skill. Talent can get you so far, but skill is what will carry you on. It's very simple. I had the talent at a very young age, and I had the passion and drive 
to continue forward and I learned my craft and I gained skills at drawing and all that. Um, and for me, I actually started drawing right after I saw was Star Wars in theaters, you know, the very first, you know, Star Wars film, you know, in 1977, I was about one years old, actually, I was, probably wasn't even one at the time, I remember the film every, the whole day and all that, my dad's truck was, uh, was on TV, you know, when they showed like the traffic and stuff, you can see my dad's vehicle, you know, right there. It's like, oh, there we are, you know, pointed at the TV and stuff. I remember that showing my dad, my mom, you know, because we got to see Star Wars and whatever. But it became such a big influence on me. I started really drawing because of that. And what I drew was the space battles. I grabbed my blank pieces of paper that I have I had was pencils and coloring pencils uh, crowns um, pens of all different types of inks and stuff and I would draw my own space battles between the rebel alliance and uh, um, the imperial empire you know x-wings and uh, and tie fighters and tie interceptors and tie bombers and all that and the Y wings and the, you know and the B wings and all that you know just you know it started with just with X wings and tie fighters you know basically X's and H's but have like the circle in the center of the H on the you know the crossbar and I would have colored lines that would be like the blast and I would when I drew like uh, the swooping lines for the motions of them going across I would go you know making the sound effects even with the gun fires you know I would do that that's what I did I did all the sound effects you know uh, the th same thing with uh, with Battlestar Galactica when that came out, and also you know Buck Rogers. I just drew more and more stuff, you know, and I got better and better. Um, when I start doing more uh, life drawings and stuff, actually. I was still a very young child, um, probably about four years old, maybe five at the most. Um, I saw on television, I was watching TV. My mom was dead tired. She was in the chair, uh, you know, in a big comfy chair, and she just passed out, sleep exhausted, and on the telly, this is during the day, and there was um, the art chest. Uh, that was a program that existed, and the creator of the show, he had was a few different programs over the years, you know, but basically it was kind of the same thing, you know, him doing different art projects and whatever. Each episode was different, teaching kids on how to do this, you know. Um, and these shows were on PBS, and they were also, you know, up for sale for VHS tapes, and meant for, like, a, a video lesson for a classroom, besides, you know, watching on television and stuff. So I watched on television, and one of the episodes at the time, especially on that particular day, when I was about four, maybe five at the most, I think I was, like, closer to four, of because... And with that episode, um, he didn't talk down to you. With all of his episodes, he never talked down to you. He did it as plainly as possible, you know, like you're talking to a kid, but, you know, that 
doesn't know how to do this, doesn't really know the terminology, and not going over the heads with terminology and stuff, but explaining in detail of what, what it is. And he showed and told about how to draw the human body, you know, the human figure, and how to be drawing it as realistic as possible. He explained it in detail while actually doing it. And I followed along, and the only subject I had was my mom on the comfy chair, big comfy chair, and she was passed out. And I had my crowns, my curly crowns, and um, uh, colored construction paper. So with my colored construction paper and my crowns, I did was drew multiple pictures of my mom and I moved around and had was a different position drawing her and whatever while she was sleeping and when she awoke wondering what I was doing and the program was ending or whatever or ended, um, I showed her the drawings that I did you know and I told her that how I learned it because she wanted to know how how did you start, you know, how did I learn how to do that? You know, I said, you know, I told her about the program that was just on television. And he explained how to do it correctly. I forgot what his name was, but I'll put the link in the bio and all that stuff. All the information down below. The doobly doop. So that's kind of how I started learning to draw realism. And I continue doing this. And I still did was like, you know, side view drawings of, you know, big expansions of like underground cities and whatever. Kind of like, um, well, of course, they were stick figure kind of drawings. I, I did a lot of that for years anyways. And those kind of drawings was just me playing with anything else, you know have pencil and eraser and paper that's kind of what I did but I've always had was my um, pencils and coloring books and things like that I just prefer you know drawing than coloring things uh, I've had so many coloring books that I love and I would do is keep them in meticulous condition and some I just had a color you know like me and my sister would color these pictures, you know, these coloring books. I had gigantic, you know, Disney coloring books that were massive, like about as big as uh, your bed. These were big coloring books and multiple pages and stuff. You can go through a pack of crowns, but on just one page alone. <laughs> No, but I had tons and tons of crowns. Um, me, my brother, and my sister, the uh, Tammy. She, she loved to to color. I was more into drawing than anything else. Um. And that's kind of where it really began of, you know, from after on opening day of watching Star Wars coming home. And then I just had to do was draw and then, you know, the, the space battles and doing my own versions of the space battles. Not like one on one for what I saw, but my own point of views and stuff and how I think that they had multiple battles that were not shown in the film like because you know that they, the rebels have been fighting the Imperials for a long time so yeah just because um, I can draw the way I can and it's better than you or something or you say oh I can draw better yeah good for you but even if you can't well good for you um don't try to rate yourself against what I can do 
or anybody because everybody has their own limits, their own, um, you know, mile markers of capabilities. Hmm. So, you think that uh, you're not successful? Uh, well, success is on what you consider it. Because everybody has their goals and what they consider to be successful. And what is successful to you might not be successful to somebody else. But you might think that you're lagging behind. That you're not where you're supposed to be. Then all I have to say is, well, work at it. That's simple. Oh, for those that wondering, like, how can they get as good as me or better? Well, here's the simple thing. Draw. Like, if you want to draw like I can, then practice. Learn the techniques. Try different um, drawing styles and stuff. There's not one particular way. There's a whole mess of ways. So, go for it. Just keep on drawing it every day. Um, yeah. I was planning of doing, like, art lessons. You know, a whole mess of art lesson videos. Kind of similar in detail of, like, what you would get in college. So, you want to get better, um. Like I said, just go for it. Um, should you go to art school or take art classes? I say, if that is your passion, uh, you wish to do so. I I said, I suggest that yeah, go ahead. I did because that was kind of my goals, and a lot of my teachers got kind of pissed off because um, I was way better than what they were expecting because they wanted me in the more advanced classes and until they realized I was taking all of their classes at once because I was on the roll sheet multiple times it's like because you have to understand a lot of them was basically the same thing but they had it in you know like one group of kids that would be um you know introduction to drawing and then you had um you know intermediate you know beginners uh, and uh, uh, you had was advanced and yeah you could do is enroll in all of them even if it was in the same classroom at the same time uh, with the same teacher and all that I enrolled in all of them at once because that's what you could do. And that's what I did. And so my teachers, when they started noticing, they, like, got a question of me about this. And I said, well, I can't do this. It's like, yeah. And seeing my work, it's like, you, you shouldn't be in any of these classes. You should be, you know, like, gone into... Um, Did a, uh, the more advanced courses or some jazz or whatever. Because all these different courses like this, you had to take these as uh, uh, pre-requirements before you can take it as like honors art, basically. You know, like the college equivalent of honors art and stuff. Uh, and also get reviewed by your teachers and whatever if they will accept you in their courses and whatnot. Yeah. It's kind of a bunch of nonsense it feels like, but it makes sense. In some ways. But it's still nonsense nonetheless. And I had some teachers that want to just throw me out. And I told them no um, on this. And I had explained to them is like, look, I don't know what you're going to teach. 
I don't want to do is test out on this because I have no idea what you're going to teach. And all I've taken with art was from PBS and the limited art courses that they had from grade school all the way through high school. You know, a lot of this stuff was not in great detail on on a lot of stuff. You know, most of it was on different crafts, you know, you know, different forms of art, you know, but nothing meticulous or in high detail of what it is, except for a lot of uh, the art courses I took, you know, well, basically took before taking actual art classes in college, you know, the, you know, watching on PBS and stuff, you know, it's like uh, the art chest or um, uh, any of uh, those art courses, you know, those things that were meant for grade schools and stuff that was on PBS. And same thing with the joy of painting or uh, um, Bob Ross's shows, you know, uh, uh, his show or... Um, the lady with the the lisp and stuff, uh, painting of flowers and things like that, seeing different drawing and painting techniques and whatnot, and there was a program on um, on uh, making statues and stuff, you know, and there were you know with clay and stuff like that, and there was oh the big A, yeah, there was another weird kids art program show and then me just drawing from real life uh, of different things and also trying to draw the cartoon characters that were on television as quickly as I can even though it's you know the show's going on and I didn't have a VCR at the time to pause it my dad did but at my house no we didn't because I lived with my mom not with my dad, so, you know, I had to do was basically plead my case and specifying that I had no idea what this teacher was going to be teaching, you know, I may seem like I'm really good, but I need to learn more, I don't know what you're going to teach me, so I am just going to go from beginning to end to see what you go for I was like okay and he didn't throw me out there was a few that tried to and um I got was the dean of hearts to do is like say no f you he's staying in because there was a few teachers that just wanted me out because they found a loophole that I didn't take is the requirement of of reading and writing you know, of certain, you know, uh, you know, cause, and they looked at all of my classes and, and I was passing all of that and saw my grade, you know, what the requirements are, you know, which was like reading, writing, and arithmetic was like supposed to be uh, college level nine or higher by this college's standards and he just specified well he's doing good in all these other courses including yours even though I can see that you have a thing against him and no he's not going to be thrown out of your class because of this technicality and since he's doing well in all these other courses that also require is reading and writing comprehension courses you know of all this stuff and same thing with mathematics well his highest thing that he has to be is level nine um i suspect that he's at least level nine or higher and no he doesn't need to take it in advance you know taking the correct math courses or whatever beforehand oh these particular teacher, especially this one female teacher, was so livid. Oh, she was pissed off.
but that's just how it is. Um, most of the time, I've had teachers that said that I was a smart ass and wanted me to teach. Um, I had some art teachers that were very jealous of me because I had more talent than they did. Um, one was jealous of me is actually because of uh, the females in the class. He wanted to fuck them. That's basically it. He was going after girls that were, you know, about 18, 19 years old or early 20s. And he just wanted to fuck them. Although he was like probably uh, in his late 20s to early 30s or whatever. Um, and he was like giving me fucked up grades and he kept on fucking with me constantly. Like there was this bunch of girls. This was like when we're doing like uh, life drawings and we had to draw from a model, but this was like uh, for our final, you know, you know, within the final week or whatever, or a couple of weeks, we had to draw you know, uh, the this particular pose from the model, and we would wherever we were at, that's the position we were in. There's these bunch of girls that complained they're Asian. Um, they were jealous of my work for a long time throughout our class. They bugged this teacher, knew that he would bend over backwards because he wants to just fuck the shit out of them. Except he's one of those guys that's like kind of a creepy flirting kind of guy, but still timid that he cannot um, make it happen, you know? It's like, dude, quit being a creep, you know? Just talk to him like a normal person, man. Like, if you want to fuck him, just say, hey, do you want to fuck? You know? It's like, literally, like, yeah, it's, I think these girls knew how to play the guy or whatever. You know, knew that he was trying to be flirty or whatever, but they knew how to do is wrap them around their pinky and stuff. So they're at one end of the classroom, nowhere near me. They go to the teacher saying, I stole their spot. And I said, no, I've been here since day one of this class. I haven't moved. This is the position I've been in ever since. And this nude model was wondering and even said, well, like, he's always been right here. He hasn't moved. And I even showed, and then he rather listened to the girls instead of me. And, like, I explained to him, like, look at where I'm positioned. Look at the picture that I'm drawing the model. I've been in this position multiple times. Look at all the pictures. They all point to this position. Even she said, I've always been here. And she's known me for a long time because I've taken a lot of uh, art classes. And she's like the model that uh, was in pretty much all my art classes as the model. And by the way, this model loves the way I draw her. Even if it's like a simplistic, almost cartoonish kind of way, she loves that. She even loves the fact that uh, um, I draw like very um, detailed drawings of her that are really quick. I, she, like, she typically does not look at her pictures, like what people draw of her, but sometimes she wants to see like what they well, uh, they do you know if it's something interesting and she saw mine and she was enthralled with mine even when there were quick drawings and i did was use colored pencils <laughs> these were like you know one minute drawings and whatever and i did was full color renderings of her you know even though it was like kind of cartoonish in some ways i mean not you know, I mean, simplistic uh, drawings, you know. It's still a life drawing, but simple, but not um, 
photorealistic or hyper realistic, but it was still a very good for a really quick drawing. I mean, it's better than most because most people just kind of scribble and get like kind of the shape out and whatever. Yeah, it's actually very easy if you use um, charcoal to do that, you know, to get the shadows and the shading and stuff like that to get all the detail, you know, of the look, you know, with charcoal. Oh, it's way easy. Um, I don't suggest using like charcoal pencils. Those are horrible. Um, just get actual um, charcoal such as, I don't mean like charcoal per cats. No, 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 no. Or, you know, charcoal that's for a barbecue, you know, charred wood like that. No, no, no. Go to the art store. Get yourself is like um, willow sticks. Um, I suggest getting the, um, the medium sized branches, you know. It's charred willow branches, not the really thin ones because those usually are going to break and they're usually really super soft and just can, you know, explode in your hand more or less. But the more of the medium sized ones, you know, it's like a branch, but not super thick, but, you know, a good size, you know, like a big fat pencil, you know, you know, bigger than those blue pencils, you know, that you had in grade school, you know, so you want something kind of bulky, but not like where it's, you have to use two hands to use, you know, something that is like a big, thick crown, kind of, you know, good size, you know, that you can fit your hand, uh, hand around, you know, and don't use so much pressure, just quickly Draw the, um, the outlines and whatever and smudge to get the, the values correct. Don't try to go for straight lines, whatever, because you're going to screw up. So you want to do is do values. Um, an easy way of doing about it is also um, getting yourself is white color pencils and black uh, construction paper you know get yourself a sheet of black construction paper just draw is <laughs> the outlines and whatever and also the light uh, the lighter tones of the face you know you know, or you can go like in reverse you know having the white part at you know what you're drawing and to be is um, the darker values <laughs> go in reverse order either way but it does help you know to see things you know some people they see is a blank white page they just get lost into it to where they don't know where to start that's why I suggest black with a white pencil then you're not so um, timid of uh, like, okay, you know, where to start. But now it's the other way around. It's all black. So you just have to form something out of the darkness, add light to it. And sometimes um, using the other colors on black ends up, making it pop more you know so you get more of the the values that really you want you know and sometimes you know you just oversaturate it on you know your colors on white so on white paper so try it on black paper you it might surprise you of how well it goes So, um, this is kind of it, and that is my picture of Kay Parker. Uh, it's not fully finished, but there's the image that I kind of done it from, but what do you think? Um. I'll 
do more videos like this if you want. Uh, yeah, like, follow, subscribe if you want, or whatever. I'll see you later. Psych. So, anyways, um, yeah. Now, let's talk about why, um, you might feel that you're not up to what it is, to where you are, especially, like, how to be successful at this. Like I said before, success is a personal thing. It's not really you know, determined in one particular way. Uh, you can be successful monetarily. You can be successful in fame. You know, it's your own personal thing about what you consider being successful or to being good or what at this or whatever. Especially if you want a career in art. Um, what type of career in art do you want? Because uh, a lot of it, you actually have to go to school to learn that. So, like, if you want to do comic books, I suggest learning the basics of drawing and stuff like that. But also, study comic books. You know, how the page layouts and stuff like that, especially if you're going to be doing the artwork of that. But if you're going to be a writer on it, Learn how to write for comics. There's books on this uh, of doing the artwork and same thing with that. Same thing with the animation. Still, you gotta take courses on how to actually animate. Um, you can do this on your own nowadays because a lot of the information is out on the internet, so you don't have to spend a fortune on classes and whatnot, but at least with classes, it gives you the structure and you have as a teacher that will be in uh, going in detail with you on this. Um, you know, it all depends on your uh, financial position and your skill level and what you're really going for, but if you want to kind of do it yourself, um, yeah, there's a lot of ways of doing it, you know, because now, you know, internet. So get yourself the programs that you need and or the material that you're going to be using for uh, reference models and stuff like that. Just continue going about on it. You know, just keep on going for it. Um, before, let's say you're very capable of creating stuff. You create a lot of things you want to do is a shop, you know. Um, let's say you want to do convention stuff. Find out which convention you want to do it in, you know, whatever it is. doesn't matter. Um, to you, it matters. But find out everything you need to know beforehand, such as, like, what is the cost of, the upfront cost to go for the convention, you know, that you want to be in the artist alley for, you know, and look up for the, the cost for your prints and things like that. All of your upfront costs and also find out what your local, you know, laws are and stuff like that or if you're going to a convention that's out of state or whatever, find out what the rules are about going about that. Uh, 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 selling over there, you know. Because each area is going to have their own rules and regulations, and a lot of it you can easily just apply for, you know, um, all the, the paperwork that you need to be able to sell in that particular state or country or whatever, or province, uh, you know, at a convention because you'll need it is like 
vendor's license or something like that. Sometimes it's just only for that particular time that you can have it is, um, you know, uh, not like a permanent vendor's license, just a temporary one. And that's cool. Because make sure that you get all the legal stuff out of the way because when you don't do that and you get to that convention, you know, they're going to expect you to already have all your paperwork in order and they need to see all that before they can assign you because sometimes they'll say no. And by the way, um, you ain't getting a refund. <laughs> uh, you know, so yeah, you might find out that you can't afford it right off the front. Don't say that you have to do it this year. Just find out what it is ahead of time. And seeing how much it costs you. And try to get all of your prints and whatnot that you want to sell. You know, if it's comic books or it's like copies of your art. You know, like posters and stuff like that. You know, stickers and keychains and whatnot. Make sure that you have is a good assortment of stuff. And you got... It's like a good amount of qual uh, quantity of it. You know, I don't mean like overload right off the bat. Just think about this is your first time. And yeah. And don't like overload. Um, probably your cheapest items are most likely the ones that are going to sell the quickest it usually happens you know make sure you price things at a good price whatever not too cheap and not too high to where it's gonna you know drive away your sales because you have to understand uh people that go to conventions when they go to art uh, you know picking out artwork and stuff they go for the artists that they know and like and then they'll go to the ones that catches their eye of new stuff uh sometimes friends will show them of other creators that they happen to like and whatnot and there is always introduction level uh products you know you know so always have like some cheaper items out for sale especially for those ones that don't know who you are or your work and they happen to like it So, just make sure that you have a good assortment of stuff from the high to the low price stuff. Especially if you have is a good following online. Because nowadays, everybody has some sort of following online. Some sort of notoriety or whatever. Uh, especially with an art, you know. You have your local group that... Uh, or you know, people that know you that personally that happen to like your work or hate your work, but complete strangers, that's a whole other story, you know. But yeah, once you got all your paperwork in order and your things and all that, and don't overload on products, but even if you do, you know, just so you can get a good price on the prints and stuff like that, um, don't try to sell it all at one convention, at one go, you know. If you did, that's cool, but don't expect, like, from your first go that you would sell everything, you know. And make sure you have a, it's a good no. Um, I'll probably put a list of, like, how much that you should for your first time. This is from my own experiences and from... When I talk to other people that have done with uh, conventions and stuff like that, you know, talk to them about it because I was interested early on about like, should I go for, um, you know, the artist alley or should I go sell my stuff at, uh, um, you know, the vendor section? Because I've noticed 
there are some people that are just straight for the vendors and you know <laughs> and they don't go into the artist alley because they're too timid on it that's all that's why I was thinking about like the vendor section you know doing the whole thing uh, yeah but typically the artist alley is for you know small time people that are just artists and it's somebody that uh, owns a shop or whatever that you know or a major business and you know that's kind of why they have it separated but yeah uh, yeah and you're wondering like why did I stop drawing well actually um, when I was doing this I was still drawing and stuff except I wasn't really paying attention where uh for the the paper is versus you know the camera and stuff like that and I'm probably doing something else too you know oh oh yeah Oh, so anyways, so anyways, um, yeah, so if you have any questions about, you know, going on any form of your art career, um, add it to this video or whatever. I'll look at it. I'll see it. You know, put it in the comments. Um, what else? So you want to get your feet wet, as it were, get into selling and stuff, as this video is going to end. So anyways, um, Let's say you don't have the money to do conventions and stuff like that. I suggest going with like Patreon or OnlyFans or go with uh, sites like Kofi or Etsy because I kind of do all those things, but nothing is not, uh, you know, not, uh, you know, not safe for work. You know, I don't put that up there, you know. So, anyways, um, so I try to use sites like this because as a uh, intermeeting, you know, site that handles the, the financial thing. So you want to do that instead of like doing commission work, you know, having somebody knowing about your uh, accounts, especially like PayPal, because PayPal has this problem with chargeback, you know, so if you gave somebody the information like uh, to send your money through PayPal, and they can literally do is like as soon as you give them the work and whatever and they paid and whatever they'll do is take that money back quickly and they'll screw you over um you're also the other problem is uh people that are trying to screw you over on fiverr that just happens um such as like they will try to commission you work, but a lot of times they want to see it like, um, you know, like the early version of it. But sometimes what happens is that they're just trying to do is farm you for, for free stuff, you know, and want you to work for them for free and they won't actually pay you, you know. They'll just kind of screw you over. There's like so many of these kind of things. And there's also people scamming. So they're going to use your art for um, AI art 
you know, programs or whatever. You use your work as like uh, sampling or whatever. Uh, there's been a lot of problems like that where they just give you a bunch of prompts and not really discussing about what they want. So, yeah, just be very careful when you deal with people online. But at least with some of these intermeeting programs, you know, sites, people that, you know, when you're on that with those commissions, so they pay to that. Usually it's up front and it, a lot of times it's held by this intermeeting uh company sometimes they it, the pay gets you real quickly other times it's just held on but at least that um your customer does not know of your paypal and they can't charge back they can't screw you over and plus um, as long as you send everything through that site back and forth of communications, make sure you always have copies of your communiques with the, the, your customers and also information of, sell, uh, of when your stuff is being sent and stuff. So in case of they claim, oh, I never got it, I never received it, you have evidence to prove that they're lying. And even if all uh, they're going to do is kind of charge back, or whatever, it's not going to affect you personally, because usually a lot of these sites will hold on to it, and whatever they'll just do is not go for a chargeback, but just charge you for whatever it is, you know. Yeah. Basically, your commission or whatever, you know, um, so be safe. Uh, try different things. Bye.